Right, good morning everybody. Live stream has started. So uh, thank you. I can now start the uh, officially start this meeting. Uh, before I start the business of the meeting, I will go to each member of the committee to confirm that they can hear and be heard. It is a legal requirement for me to do so. If you can, please have your video on so that you can be seen by those in attendance and the public watching. Please advise me at once if at any time during the meeting you experience any technical difficulties that prevent you from being heard or from hearing. I remind members of the committee that you will only be able to vote on an application before the committee if you've been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application. I will now call upon each councillor uh, in turn Please speak to confirm that you are able to hear me and I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Good morning, Chair, and good morning all. I can hear and see you clearly. Good morning. I can see and hear you also. Councillor Polly Andrews. Good morning, Chair. I can hear and see you. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Good morning, Mr Chairman. I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can also see and hear you. <clears throat> Councillor Fagan. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I can see and hear you, Chair. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Foxton. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Thank you. Good morning to you. I can also see and hear you. Councillor James. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Graham Jones. Yes, good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Johnson. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Millmore. Good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you fine. Good morning. I can see and hear you. Councillor Milne. A good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you too. Good morning to you. I can see and hear you. Councillor Rohn. Good morning, Chair. Morning, colleagues. Loud and clear my end. Good morning. Also... Here and see you, uh, Councillor Selden. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can also see and hear you. Good morning, Councillor Stone. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can see and hear you too. And Councillor Wilding. Good morning. Yes, I can see and hear. Thank you. I can also see and hear you. Um, I'll now turn to um, uh, Mr. Simon Withers, who will introduce officers that are. Uh, with us this morning. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, councillors. Yes, if I can introduce the, the officers um, who are supporting the meeting today. We have uh, Jen Priest and Tim Brown from the Democratic Services team. Uh, we have Dawn Evans, the senior lawyer, who will be providing legal advice as and when necessary. Um, uh, Mark Lewis uh, is uh, also available, the team leader area engineer, who will be able to answer questions on highway matters uh, if needed. And then uh, introducing the two senior planning officers who will be presenting uh, this morning, uh, David Gossett, uh, who will be presenting item six, the dwelling at Orcop, and Gemma Webster, uh, item seven, the dwelling at Simmons Yacht. Um, my name is Simon Withers and I'm the development manager and I'm here to provide uh, planning advice uh, to the committee as necessary. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr Withers. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to today's meeting. Uh, the Council is video and audio streaming this meeting live on the Council's YouTube channel and making an official recording. Please remember what you say and do in this meeting has a global reach and your words and actions should be chosen very carefully. Please ensure that all mobile devices are switched off to prevent interference with the audio and video system. Members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. So we move to uh, the agenda uh, proper now. Uh, so item one, apologies for absence. Uh, we've received apologies from uh, Councillor Graham Andrews. Item two, name substitutes. Uh, we have the following substitute, Councillor Bowen, who is uh, representing uh, Councillor Graham Andrews. Item three, declarations of interest. Uh, 
Um, I've got one hand up, but I, I will uh, declare an interest myself to start um, on item six of the agenda. Uh, this application is in the Y Valley AOMB, and I am a member of the uh, Joint Advisory Committee, so um, I'll register a non-pecuniary interest. Uh, so, Councillor Roan. Yeah, um, I'm going to declare an interest on the uh, agenda item number six as well. I didn't know that the land actually belonged to a quite a good friend of mine. You, you, you don't know what the agricultural types own and everywhere else. So it wasn't until a further conversation that uh, I realised, so I'm going to sit it out, Chair, if that's all right with you. It's easier done that way. OK, thank you, Councillor Rowan. And um, Councillor Polly Andrews. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the uh, application for Y Valley View Simmons, yeah, many of, some of us who have been around for a long time knew Mr Russell Price as a um, member of the planning team. It's a long time ago, but uh, just to say that <laughs> We do know him. <clears throat> yes, I, th I think that goes for quite a few of the members. So yes. uh, it's a non-pecuniary interest. Uh, mm. But thank you for uh, just making mm. it clear. Um, I have to say the same again, but it was a long time ago. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Uh, we move on then to um, item four, the minutes, uh, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the uh, 7th of April, 2021. No matters of accuracy have been notified to the monitoring officer. So can I ask the democratic services if the electronic voting system is ready and to confirm the number of eligible uh, voting committee members for this poll? Yes, Chairman, we have 15 voting members and you may vote now. All right, so that's in front of us now. For anybody that wasn't at the meeting, you can abstain. Chairman, all votes have been cast and the minutes have been unanimously accepted. Okay, thank you for that. And I should remind members that an electronic log of the uh, voting choices is now being kept and uh, will be published as an appendices to the uh, formal minutes of the meeting. So uh, I think members need to be aware of that. Uh, chairman's announcements. Uh, I would just like to um, thank members um, those members that uh, came on to planning site visits on Monday. I think it was a very useful exercise just to get the lie of the land um, in Orcup and uh, also um, the topography of the, um, the site in um, Simmons Yat. So um, uh, that will be useful for the, uh, the debate yeah. for when we get into it. Um, Ch Chairman, um, could I just briefly re return just briefly to the declaration of interest item? You referenced the um, uh, committee's, some members of the committee's familiarity with or knowledge of Mr. Price, uh, mm -hmm. but equally the, um, the first application is by in, the agent for that application is Mr. Tompkins, who would be in the same situation. So I think I, that should just be referenced to, yeah. Very true. Thank you for uh, that clarification, Mr. Brown. Okay. Oh, Chair, can I, can I come in? Sorry. Sorry, I should have obtained on the last thing, John. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> okay. Um, I, don't I, think... have, I have messaged Jen. Okay. Uh, well, it won't make any difference to the, uh, no, the, I thought I'd... the yeah. vote anyway, but uh, thank for you for the clarification. Right. Uh, can I now request then the uh, public speakers for uh, agenda item six? as um, virtual attendees, Mr. McRae and Mr. Cooper, the applicant, and Mr. Tompkins, the applicant's agents, are admitted to the meeting. So I can see that we've got uh, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Tompkins. Um, can There's you just a delay, Chairman, on Mr. McRae entering. Um, it, it's stuck on joining at the moment, but hopefully okay. they'll uh, join us soon. Can I just uh, confirm with Mr. Cooper uh, that you can hear and see me? Can you uh, unmute yourself? So, Yes, we can hear and see you. Okay, fine, thank you. You would uh, mute yourself now for, just for the moment. And Mr. Tompkins? Yes, can hear you, thank you very much. Thank you, I can also see and hear you. 
And uh, Mr. McRae, could you uh, just confirm that you can see and hear us? You, you need to unmute yourself, bottom left of the screen. <clears throat> okay, can you hear me now? We can indeed, thank you. Good morning to you. If you um, like to mute yourself now and uh, we'll bring you in after the uh, presentation. Thank you. So the item six on the agenda, uh, the first application this morning, uh, 202567, land west of Orcup Village Hall, Orcup. Uh, this is an outline uh, application for the erection of one dwelling. Uh, the planning officer uh, dealing with this um, this morning is uh, Mr. David Gossett, and uh, the ward councillor is uh, Councillor Fagan. Um, who will uh, have the opportunity to open and close the debate uh, when we get to that stage. Um, so without further ado, um, I sort of move to um, Mr. Gossett to uh, make the presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, members. I'll just wait for the presentation to come up. <laughs> While that is happening, um, members are firstly directed to the update sheet with regards to housing delivery in the parish of Orcop, which was a question posed by Councillor Roan on the site visit. Um, so the application before the committee today has been made in outline with all matters reserved <coughs> for the erection of a single dwelling. The application is recommended for refusal for two substantive reasons, which are set out in full in the officer's report. But briefly, they relate to the sustainability of developing in this open countryside location and the adverse landscape character impact associated with the proposal. Orcop has not progressed a neighbourhood development plan to a stage that attracts any weight in the decision making process. As such, the proposal falls to be considered against the Herefordshire Local Plan core strategy, which forms the development plan today. Additionally relevant and material is the National Planning Policy Framework. The location of the site is marked by the usual red star and lies approximately 1.5 kilometers from the crossroads shown on the far right hand side of the plan. This junction is made up of the C1234, which runs east to west, and the U71418, which runs north to south. It is at this junction that one would find Orcop Castle, a scheduled ancient monument. If one were to travel south from the crossroads, a further 650 meters, one will find Orcop Church, a grade two listed building. This is labeled as Orcop itself on the plan today. While Orcop itself is named in the core strategy as a small, smaller settlement appropriate for housing growth, the location of the site separate from Orcop is such that in policy terms, it is considered to be within open countryside. As members will have seen on the site visit and is evident for um, today on this plan, Orcop has a dispersed settlement pattern with nucleated clusters which in officer's opinion are centered around one, the church, labeled Orcop, two, the castle centered around those crossroads, and then a further cluster of buildings centered approximately around Brooklyn's farm, which lies midway between the crossroads and the application site. While the submitted planning statement seeks to establish the parish hall as the dwelling and the dwelling opposite the application site as a further cluster of Orcop, there is almost no physical or visual relationship between these two buildings, or between these buildings and the rest of the settlement. They evidently inhabit an open countryside location. Accordingly, the principle of development should be assessed against policy RA3. However, no exceptional reasons have been put forward in this instance for residential development. Next slide, please. The application site is marked by the red edge and lies some 150 meters west of Orcott Parish Hall and diagonally opposite the dwelling known as the Lion. The application site has a notably open character as a result of having only two planted boundaries to the north and east, with a post and wire fence to the west and an open boundary to the south. This is accentuated by the sloping topography, which drops off into the Garen Brook Valley to the south. The site lies within tip principal timbered farmlands, whose primary characteristic is naturally defined field boundaries with densely scattered hedgerow trees filtering the views. Next slide, please. The application has been made in outline with all matters reserved. So this plan is an indicative site layout plan, which shows how the reserved matters might be approached and to demonstrate the feasibility of the access and layout of a single dwelling. 
In regards to drainage, the application proposes to utilize a package treatment plant to dispose of foul waste, which will discharge to a reed bed and then an on-site drainage field. Surface water is proposed to discharge to a local watercourse via a perforated pipe, which will create some attenuation of flows and act as a seasonal soakaway. The site drains to the River Wye Special Area of Conservation, and so the council's ecologist has undertaken the required habitat regulations assessment. This appropriate assessment concluded that subject to conditions securing mitigation, the proposal would not have any adverse impacts on the integrity of the SAC. Natural England has consequently raised no objection to this assessment when consulted. In regards to highways and transport, the plan indicates that the existing field access could be utilised to provide an upgraded vehicular access to the site with visibility displays of 90 metres in each direction, achievable with a two metre setback from the highway's edge. The application was supported by a seven day speed survey, which elicited the required visibility space. No objection has been raised by the local highways authority and conditions could manage the technical matters of this aspect in the event of an approval. With regards to landscape, as already discussed, the dispersed nucleated clusters of Orcop do not extend this far west. And as such, the, considered, the site is considered to inhabit an open countryside location. The senior landscape officer has objected to the erection of a dwelling in this location, citing wider landscape harm from the domestic domestication of the site as a result of the built infrastructure and unnatural field division, contrary to the established landscape character and accordingly contrary to policy LD1. The indicative layout plan in front of members includes the provision of a substantial area of orchard planting to the south of the application site. However, the landscape officer did not consider this an appropriate enhancement for the landscape character, and so it does little to offset the identified harm. Next slide, please. Here are three photos from within and adjacent to the application site to give members that weren't at the site visit some context. The map indicates the location and direction of the photos coordinated by color. The red outlined photo in the bottom left is taken from within the site and shows the views southeast from the entrance of the site across the Garen, Garen Brook Valley. The black outline photo, bottom right, is taken from the same location but looking west southwest towards the adjacent field and views beyond. Finally, the green outline photo, top right, is taken from the access onto the C1234 across the front of the only neighbouring dwelling known as the Lion, which has a southerly front aspect facing out over the corner of the application site. In summary, it is notable that the council is currently unable to demonstrate a five-year housing land supply, an appropriate buffer, and as such, the MPPF directs decision makers to grant planning permission, unless the adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the framework as a whole. The location of the site is neither within or adjacent to the main built form of ORCOP, and therefore the, the site lies in open countryside. The application does not meet any of the exception criteria set out in policy RA3 and therefore fails to gain in principle support of the development plan. As a result of the location away from services, amenities, schools and public transport, future occupants of the dwelling would have an undue reliance upon a private motor vehicle to access these services and once in a private motor vehicle would be more likely to travel further afield to access a better range of services than those provided in nearby villages. As a result, the proposal is only likely to offer very limited support to services in nearby villages, as paragraph 78 of the MPPF envisages. It is officers' view that this does not represent a sustainable pattern of development and would be contrary to policies RA2, RA3, SS4 and SS7 of the core strategy, as well as paragraph 79 of the MPPF. Furthermore, the erection of the dwelling in this location would irreparably damage the open and rural character of the landscape in conflict with policy LD1 and running contrary to the overarching objectives of the MPPF. It is considered that the adverse impacts significantly and demonstrably outweigh the limited benefits of a single dwelling and it is accordingly recommended that planning permission is refused for the two reasons set out in the officer's report. Thank you members. Chairman, that brings me to an end. Uh, thank you Mr Gossett, uh, very clear report. Um, Right, we have a written statement from um, uh, the Parish Council, which Mr. Brain will uh, read out to us now. 
um, and then I will invite uh, the other speakers to uh, make their representation. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, the Parish Council's comments are virtually the same as those at paragraph 5.5 .5 of the report, sorry, 5.1 of the report. Um, they're as follows. The Parish Council would like to reiterate its original objections to the proposals set out in the planning application, which encompass the following. The proposed dwelling is contrary to Herefordshire Council's core strategy, para 4.8.22, which clearly states that new isolated houses should be avoided. The core strategy also states that new housing outside the defined settlements, Orcop and Orcop Hill, will be restricted to avoid unsustainable patterns of development. Moreover, there is a distinct lack of a relationship to both sites. Reference to a village hall is misleading as it suggests a location within the settlement boundary, which is not the case. Based on the available information, the proposed residential development fails to satisfy the criteria set in RA3 of the course strategy and, in so doing, should not be permitted in what is open countryside. It is considered that the adverse impact of the proposed dwelling would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits in accordance with paragraph 11 of the National Policy Planning Framework. The construction of a single dwelling will not have a material impact on delivering the housing target. Approval of the planning application would set a precedent allowing additional properties to be built on land in the open countryside. Finally, the Parish Council has noted and fully supports the content of the case officer's report on this application. And that concludes, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, I now move across to uh, our three public speakers. Uh, Mr. McRae, who is a local resident and an objector, uh, you have three minutes in your own time, please. Thank you. You'll need to unmute yourself. Hello. Can you hear me OK? We can indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to put forward the following points for consideration regarding this application that have been sent to me by other objectors. The development is out of character for settlement development patterns within the parish of Orcop. Number two, it conflicts with the Herefordshire local plan, core strategy and many strategic policies within these for isolated dwellings within open countryside. Three, the proposal is visually dominant from a wide range of surrounding landscapes, footpaths and viewpoints. Four, would have a ne negative impact on the historic landscape and character of local historic farmstead groupings. Five, the double garage would be very out of character being situated within open countryside and could be extended upwards as permitted development. Six, the original farmhouse and barns associated with, site, with this site have already been sold off and the, the land is separate from the location site. Seven, the applicant has no agricultural need for the property and would be changing the landscape's character and use of agricultural land. Eight, Owned vehicles would be essential from this location to access everyday services and amenities, schools or employment, as there is no frequent access to public transport and therefore not likely to benefit people locally. As the open countryside of Herefordshire has always been protected so well, this development could possibly result in patterns for building which, have a, which will have a negative impact upon the open countryside within Orcop in the future. So I've got a few comments of my own. Were this application to succeed, the applicant's arguments used here would be difficult to resist when applied to similar isolated sites. I have no doubt that the applicant, recorded as an active director of a property development company at Company's House, is well placed to exploit such a consent. Secondly, were consent given, objectors' only recourse to re-examination of such a decision is to seek a judicial review, a lengthy and costly process. process. By contrast, the refusal still allows the applicant to appeal for a ruling by the planning inspectorate. He still has a relatively quick and straightforward second chance. I would urge this committee to support their officer's analysis as contained in their report to this committee and refuse consent for this application. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Thank you very much, That's Mr. The end of my... Thank you, if you could mute yourself now, that would be good. Um, I now move across to uh, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Tompkins, who um, uh, share a three minute slot. So I'm not too sure who is going to start, but uh, I'll leave it between the 
pair of you to uh, decide. So uh, in your own time, please, three minutes. Good morning, Chairman and committee members. This land has been in my wife's family since the early 1900s. Originally, her great-grandparents moved here from Swansea, and both her grandfather and father were raised at the farm. As a child, Nina loved visiting her auntie, who lived at the Garendale farm. Unfortunately, after her death, it was not possible for the family to remain living in the area, although her grandfather did inherit the land. Throughout her teenage years, Nina would spend many afternoons exploring the farm fields and mill wood. Knowing how special the farm was to Nina, I proposed to her there, and thankfully she accepted. Now we own part of the old farm to ourselves, we have great opportunity to help conserve the land and our share of Garren Brook that flows through, not forgetting our plans to plant more trees and to assist in regenerating mill wood, the five acres of woodland attached to the land, of which our children also love to explore following in their mother's footsteps and of course, the greatest opportunity will be to bring up our two young children in this beautiful village and setting. From speaking with parish owners, the consensus I have had is it seems, although later houses have been densely placed on Orcop Hill, the traditional parish and the village of Orcop is more sporadically spaced settlement. With the position of properties to each side of the plot, it too would not be out of place. We are extremely keen to ensure our home is environmentally friendly and self-sufficient where possible, but we are adamant that the design fits the area. We live local at Much Jew Church, so already have great friendships within the community. We would love to be an active part of the community and help support and strengthen the parish in years to come. Thank you for your time. Good morning all. The village of Orcop is identified for growth in the core strategy and has the first settlement pattern. For this reason, paragraph 4.15 of your core strategy is crucial to determining this application in our view. 4.15 assists with one's understanding of RA2, which is the policy to determine the principle of development here. It explains that smaller settlements such as Orca are, and I quote, and do not, often do not have a traditional village or nuclear centre, and in many cases have a dispersed settlement pattern which would need to be respected in the design of new housing proposals. That is the case here. If one were to try and create a village core, it would harm the sporadic settlement pattern of the village and the heritage assets therein. This application upholds a sporadic settlement pattern and is the type of development envisaged by 4.15 of the core strategy. The proposal would also be a truly sustainable build that would respond to the council's climate emergency and includes two acres of orchard planting. There cannot be many smaller developments that deliver so much landscape and biodiversity enhancement as this. In summary, this application represents an opportunity for the council to support a truly environmentally led sustainable development in a parish where there is no NDP and where, in your officer's words, there is an ongoing under delivery of housing. We hope you're able to support this application. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tompkins. Um, right, I'd now like to request that the three virtual attendees leave the meeting, uh, but I'd just like to remind them that they will be able to uh, watch the live stream of this meeting on the Council's YouTube channel. Uh, so thank you to all three of you. And I wish you a good day. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I now move across to um, uh, Ward Councillor for this application, uh, Councillor Fagan, who is the local ward member for this item. Uh, she is also a member of this committee, but as the local ward member, uh, she can speak but does not have a vote. Um, she will be able to speak first and then has the right to speak at the end of the debate. So um, uh, in your own time, please, Councillor Fagan. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And colleagues, um, thank you. I've asked for this application to come before you this morning because it has caused some controversy locally. And I believe it's in the public interest for these issues to be debated in um, the public um, sphere and to be decided in this forum with your collective experience and expertise to help settle the matter. Um, as you heard, the granting of permission on this site is would be contrary to core strategy policy RA2, RA3 and LD1. And it is in, in my belief policy RA2 that's at the heart of the question as to whether this site constitutes open countryside or a potential housing site in a dispersed settlement. Uh, thank you to those that could make the site visit to beautiful Orcop on Monday. Um, as you will have seen, the settlement in this area is definitely dispersed and 
there is a lot of open countryside to be seen. Um, this site is described as being adjacent to the village hall and much has been made of that point. Um, but in fact, Orkop does not have a village centre as such and the hall is in an isolated position and is in fact a parish hall serving the wider parish of Orkop. Um, there's a substantial difference between a parish hall and a village hall, a village hall suggesting a village centre. The, the two are often confused in, with each other in Orkop and the hall is often referred to as the village hall, um, but is, as I said, a, a parish hall. Um, Orkop does not have an NDP as yet. It does have a hard working group who are drafting an NDP. And as everyone knows that that's not an easy task, but this site is not in the draft settlement boundary for Orkop and it's not supported by the NDP steering group. And there's been much concern locally that approval would set a precedent allowing additional properties to be built in open countryside. And as you've heard, this application is not supported by the parish council and also many local residents. And I can fully understand why a young family owning a piece of land in Orcop would want to build and move there. And uh, if it was me, I would probably feel the same. Uh, the argument for an option for an, uh, and I quote, odd additional house in a dispersed settlement, unquote, has been voiced in response to the questionnaire on housing in Orcop. And I believe there is some tension in Orcop between protecting op open countryside. And as one comment in the draft NDP housing delivery report describes, um, one of, quote, one of the last unspoilt areas of Herefordshire. Um, in the questionnaire, when asked where not to build, many responses pointed to the need to avoid building isolated dwellings in open countryside because this would impact on the landscape and associated views. There were also, however, some comments about directing new dwellings to existing hamlets instead of Orcop and Orcop Hill because there are identified fragilities within both those settlements. And this approach uh, of uh, new dwellings in existing hamlets it would be seen to be more in line with the traditional patterns of development in the dispersed settlement. Um, so if you're using that argument, what difference would the odd occasional house make? Within responses to the questionnaire, there was a suggestion, and I quote, to bring the village out to where the village hall is and unite it with the hamlet a little, unquote. So all COPS parishioners are working on their NDP and their settlement area, which looks unlikely to include this site or any others in the vicinity of the hall, um, but an, a made NDP is some way off yet. And so I believe that we have to refer to our core strategy policies, which focus on sustainable development. And it's clear that apart from the parish hall, there are no services locally and the closest service being the Fountain Pub some miles away in Orcop Hill, where there is also an intermittent bus service. But I look forward to your debate on this as to whether organic growth in a dispersed settlement resulting in the additional odd house would be acceptable as the applicant and their supporters suggest, or whether in the context of our current policies, proposals for the site are not accepted as per the planning officer's report. So thank you very much for your, um, the, uh, your views on this. Thank you, Councillor Fagan. Um, now, I just want to clarify, Councillor Rohn is still in the meeting. He did say that he was going to stand out for this application. So should he actually be in the waiting room rather than just with his camera off? I agree, Councillor Hardwick. Yes, if he's actually said that he's going to leave and he's actually declared an interest that would uh, preclude him from being in the meeting, he needs to be put in the waiting room. OK, thank you for that clarification. Uh, Councillor Selden. Thank you, Chair, um, and, and thank you for entertaining us at a site visit, uh, everybody. Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Gossett and Councillor Fagan yesterday. It was very interesting and very illuminating. I cannot think of a more open countryside location than this application. <coughs> um, 
I have every sympathy with the applicant and his wish to stay locally, but I think our policies are quite clear that um, developments in open countryside need to be truly exceptional and blend in with the local countryside. In fact, the words from the NPPF are to preserve and enhance. Um, so I, I cannot see how this application does anything. I mean, I notice also the application includes the planting of an orchard. Well, I had a good look around the countryside around that and I could not see another orchard visible from, from the site. So it's unfortunate that um, they've chosen that site. Um, I don't believe that it is adjacent to the parish hall. I think it's about 150 metres up the road. So I, I am afraid, Chairman, I am going to propose we accept the officer's recommendation and refuse this application. Thank you, Councillor Selden. Um, have I a seconder for that proposal? I would Thank second that, Chair. Councillor Paul Andrews. Thank you. Uh, I now move to the next speaker, uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Oh, thank you, Chairman. I think Councillor Selden has made all the points, really. This is completely unsustainable. It's an open countryside, and I agree with the uh, decision. The officer's report, we've refused this application. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, and, and thank you for the planning officer for his uh, very clear report. Uh, yes, I'd also um, counsel against giving permission to an individual for their sole use, because it never happens that way, or very rarely does. There's no, nothing to stop them, in fact, selling off immediately. Uh, just a warning that we've had that experience in other places, and it has been very unfortunate. Uh, so just beware of that, please. Uh, we should also respect the parish council's views, I think. And the neighboring and the developing neighborhood development plan. And they very much uh, do not include this part of the uh, of the area in their in their future plans at all. And it, it is very much, as you say, in the open countryside. And I think it is unsustainable. And unfortunately, I think for them, we should vote against this particular application. Uh, also, another little point: our roads are in miles, not kilometers. Please, can we have distances in planning meetings and in planning reports in miles, please? Um, I think we should remember that. I know that kilometers are on the continent, but we've left the continent now, I believe. So can we please stick with miles? It is easier for us all, I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bowen. Uh, I think you've made that point with regards to miles uh, many times in the past. Well, I wish they'd remember it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor James, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, whilst I have every sympathy with someone, a family which, which wishes to to um, come back to it, uh, their, root, their roots, um, I cannot see any ground on which we can give planning permission for this particular site. We would set a precedent. I mean, literally, thousands and thousands of sites would be equal to this in, in uh, planning terms if we were to give approval for this. So we have no alternative but to, to refuse this application. I, I, I don't think we need to debate this much. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor John. Uh, Councillor James. Councillor Johnson, please. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I was not able to attend the site meeting yesterday, so I'm not as well informed as my colleagues. However, one point I have picked up in this short debate so far is repeated reference to um, precedents being set. One of the things I recall most about attending planning meetings is the exhortation that we should only be looking at the application in front of us and should not consider um, further applications and other things outside. We ought to look at the plan itself. Um, it does seem to me that there are occasions where um, planning officers, and I understand and respect the job they're doing, 
um, but they do seem to be a bit selective. Um, we should look at just the plan in front of us on some occasions, and we should consider wider implications on other occasions. Um, it does seem rather inconsistent to me, given that this village is <clears throat> uh, one of a scattered nature, I'm finding it difficult to see what difference um, um, an extra house would make. Uh, my inclination is to support the application, um, but uh, I'll stop there, Chairman, and listen to the rest of the debate. Okay, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Um, Councillor Milne, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, yes. Um, when uh, 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 trying to find exceptions to uh, the rule against uh, building uh, new houses in the open countryside, um, what, um, what I, I tend to look at uh, the old NPPF paragraph 79, sometimes known as the Gummer Clause, which, which gives this um, or, um, the potential for this opportunity for the development of very exceptional quality that genuinely has, has the ability to, to grace a landscape uh, um, uh, uh, the opportunity for for, the, for, for, for such developments to be, be considered, but I do 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 worry really. Here we've got a, an application which um, is quite suburban in quality, albeit obviously we we're dealing with an outline. We can't see the full detail um, that uh, is expressed in a way that um, suggests that it would need to be screened with hedges and, a, and an orchard. I'm not at all sure than an orchard will do very well at this altitude. It's uh, 450 feet or so after all, and there's no, as it has been observed by other members, no historical precedent for it. So I, I'm, I, I alas, uh, I'm, I'm also minded sadly to, to, uh, to vote against this. Um, I mean, one, one would note that there are other, other buildings isolated within the locality, the, the, the building on the other side of the road, which historically, originally I believe was a, was a smithy. Um, but they are very much um, buildings that uh, had occupancies that were very closely tied to the land. Um, and it is difficult to, to accept an argument that this would be. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Mill. Councillor Wilding. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, there are many reasons why I'd like to support this application. However, um, I, can't, I can't in its current form. I find, I find it very difficult to support it in its current form. I do get the feeling that the applicant would respect the environment and would like to enhance it. Um, and I know this is an outline um, application, but I would want to see actual plans that actually promised an exceptional development for me to feel that I could support it. So if a precedent were set uh, for this sort of development, the bar would have to be set very high for, for the development to be exceptional. It would have to be really sustainable, not just pretend to be sustainable, and it would have to be a really exceptional design. So I'm afraid I can't support this, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Wilding. I got no further hands raised. Um, so before I go back to the uh, ward councillor, um, I'll call on uh, Mr. Withers uh, to make any comments before um, before the ward councillor sums up. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I've no particular comments to add to the debate. I think members have grasped um, the the issues quite clearly. Um, and um, I, I, I think uh, I'll hand over to, to Councillor Fagan on that basis and then uh, back to you to uh, to deal with the vote. OK, thank you, Mr Withers. Uh, Councillor Fagan, please. OK, members, thank you very, very much for, for that debate. And I, I really appreciate this debate happening in a public forum like this because there has been uh, quite a lot of speculation around this and as a rural ward councillor the this is the type of question that I get presented with quite a lot um, and although 
I realize that we have our policies to, to guide us. Sometimes the more human aspects of um, applications sort of um, be, become more prominent and uh, so sometimes muddy the waters. And um, so I think it's, it's really good to be able to have that discussion. And it, it will certainly help me in um, future ward work when applications applications like this come up, I think that you've managed to grasp the, the issues here. Um, and, you know, there, I mean, there is a question for our rural communities about how we actually have um, sustainable and organic growth. Um, in quite a lot of our settlements, um, th that is saturated now. But I think that the, the issues are quite clear in, in this application. So thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Councillor Fagan. Um, can I remind members of the committee that you can only vote on this application if you have been present for the whole of the presentation and discussion on the application. Does anybody need to advise me that they are not permitted to vote? I see no hands. So can I ask Democratic Services whether the electronic voting system is ready to confirm the number of eligible voting committee members for this poll? I believe it's 13. Uh, yes, Chair, 13 voting members and the poll should be on your screen. Right, so this, um, this vote is for refusal of application 202567. Uh, proposed by Councillor Selden, seconded by uh, Councillor Paul Andrews, that this application is refused. So um, you vote for refusal, against or abstain. So if you could vote now, please, and press the blue submit button. Chair, all votes are in. Uh, 12 for one abstention. Okay, thank you. So um, that application is refused. Um, I got a call for a, a, a 10 minute uh, uh, comfort break. It's now 10.47. Uh, uh, can I ask that the uh, live stream... Mm. Being a bit slow. <clears throat> Has it started, Jen, or not? Fine. Okay, we've had confirmation now that the live stream is started. Uh, so I'd like to welcome everybody back to the meeting uh, following our adjournment. Uh, can I request that the public speakers for a Agenda item seven attended as virtual attendees. And Ms. Miller, and, uh, Mr. Price, the applicant's agent, are admitted into the room. Thank you, oh, oh, Price. <clears throat> you see, uh, Mr. Price, Ms. Miller, okay. Right, welcome. Uh, to you both. Uh, can you confirm that you can see and hear us, uh, please, Mr. Price? Yes, I can see and hear you. Okay, thank you. And uh, Miss Miller, if you could confirm that you can see and hear us, please. I can confirm that I can see and hear you. Okay, thank you. We can also see and hear you. Uh, right, the uh, second application this morning, item seven, is uh, 202050 uh, Land at Y Valley View, Simmons Yat, Rossong Y, uh, proposed detached dwelling. Uh, with regards to uh, declarations of interest, I made a declaration at the start of the meeting um, that I was a member of the AONB Joint Advisory Committee. Um, I think I referenced item six at the time, it should have been seven. So uh, I'm just confirming that I've uh, got an interest as a member of that uh, committee, uh, but it's a non-pecuniary interest. And I believe that Councillor Watson may wish to uh, declare that interest as well. So 
if I could invite uh, Councillor Watson to make that declaration now, that would be good. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I am also a, um, I'm actually the Vice Chair of the Y Valley AOMB Joint Advisory Committee. But it's at, like Councillor Hardwick, it's um, a non pecuniary Okay, fine. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, the planning officer dealing with this application is uh, Mrs. Webster, Gemma Webster. Um, and we have um, uh, the local ward member, uh, Councillor Watson, who's not a member of this committee, uh, but uh, has the opportunity to open and close the debate. So without further ado, um, I'll hand across to uh, Mrs. Webster, please, to make the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Morning, members. There are no updates regarding this application. <laughs> the site is located within the settlement of Simmons Yacht West on the eastern slope of Doward Hill, shown by the red star on the map. Simmons Yacht is identified within the core strategy, policy RA2, as a smaller settlement where proportionate housing will be appropriate. The site is located within the Y Valley AOMB. The proposal seeks full planning permission for the construction of a detached three bedroom dwelling, which will be of a split level design with parking area for three cars and cycle storage. Next slide, please. The existing property, Y Valley View, is a detached two story dwelling set within a large curtilage located between the lower B4164 and Ashes Road above, which is a byway. The curtilage also includes a converted outbuilding used as a holiday let and a detached garage. The principal access to Y Valley View is from the lower road adjacent to Y Not Inn, and a secondary access from Ashes Road along with the access to the paddock also in the ownership of the applicant. Surrounding the site are a mixture of stone two-storey cottages and rendered two-storey and split-level dwellings and bungalows. The site is located within the settlement boundary defined within the Whitchurch and Ganaroo Neighbourhood Development Plan, which was made 11th of October 2019. Policy WG2 of the NDP states that infilling may take place within the settlement boundary where this matches the scale and form of the settlement and is designed to fit sensitively into the landscape and result in the enhancement of the natural and historic environment. As can be seen from the top block plan on the slide, this part of Simmons Yacht is largely represented by detached dwellings within their own plots which runs along the slope that runs west to east towards the river and therefore utilise split level properties with many properties having access from the network of Ashes Lane and other small lanes. Next slide, please. The application site comprises approximately the southern third of the curtilage and extends the full depth between the lower and upper roads. Within the site is a mixture of terrace lawns, garden trees and hedge planting. Levels fall sharply from the upper to lower road, as can be seen on this existing site plan. The dwelling would be sited at the western end of the site, primarily on an area of terrace lawns. Next slide, please. The proposed dwelling utilises the site levels to achieve a split level design with the more traditional accommodation layout reversed so that the bedrooms are at ground floor and kitchen and living space at first floor. The most western part of the proposed dwelling would be single storey adjacent to the car parking when viewed from Ashes Lane. <coughs> Only one storey will be seen as shown on the western elevation plan on the top right. Amended plans were received in November 2020, which reduced the overall scale and size of the dwelling. The dwelling will be primarily constructed using natural stone at ground floor and timber clad elevations above under a pitch slate roof. The split level design reduces the overall scale and mass of the property, whilst making better use of the land, without the need for significant engineering works by following the site contours and terrace lawns. The proposed dwelling will be built in accordance with the increased energy efficiency standards with benefits of passive solar gain to be maximised through incorporating larger areas of glazing on the east, south and west elevations and minimising openings on the north elevation. The first floor glazing on the east elevation will also incorporate tinted glass to control overheating and minimise light spill. Solar PV panels are proposed on the southern roof slope of the proposed dwelling and a low carbon heating system in the form of an air source heat pump is also to be incorporated. Next slide, please. As stated earlier, the site is located within the settlement boundary and within a large garden curtilage infill plot. NDP policy WG5 states that housing development should be individual dwellings close to road frontages that reflect the form and massing around the settlement pattern, utilise infill plots 
and viewed in relation to the character and grain rhythm and density of the area. Ensure dwellings are appropriate size, be capable of being accommodated upon the narrow lane network and not result in the need for them to be widened and to ensure tree and hedgerow cover is retained. Officers consider that this proposal meets all of the criteria within the NDP policy, of particular note is shown within this plan for ecological enhancement, which is including approximately 85 metres of new native hedgerow to be planted along the northern boundary and eastern boundary of the site and along the western boundary of the adjacent paddock. In addition, there will be significant new tree and shrub planting to maintain and provide additional screening into the site. This plan also shows that foul water will be disposed of via mains drainage and new connection will be made on the lower road, of which Welsh water have no objections. Surface water will be managed through suds such as underground cellular storage and permeable pavings and soakaways. The land drainage officers consider these methods acceptable and conditions have been recommended for a detailed surface water strategy and infiltration testing to be provided. The plan shows in the top right a cross section of the proposed dwelling looking from the north and how it fits into the contours and existing terrace gardens. Next slide, please. A full landscaping plan has been submitted, providing details of all planting and maintenance. The landscape officer has reviewed the plans and originally requested a reduction in the scale and size of the property. This was achieved through amended plans. The landscape officer has no objection and has stated that unique design within the infill plot is more suitable to the scale and character of the settlement and follows the rhythm of buildings along this developed side of Simmons Yap. Next slide, please. The existing access of Ashes Road is to be utilised to accommodate level access to a parking area for three dwellings and secure cycle parking. Amended plans received to overcome the original highway concerns on the 12th of February. These amendments included reducing the size and repositioning of the cycle and bin store, stepping back the new proposed hedgerow along the northern boundary to ensure that there is sufficient visibility space to allow drivers to reverse out of the proposed parking area onto the byway without any obstruction to visibility. Following these amendments, the area engineer team leader has no objection to the proposals and accepts that cars will be required to reverse out onto the byway, but will now have the required visibility to do so. In addition, there are no objections from the Public Rights of Way officer. The Highways officer has recommended that a construction management plan is conditioned, which in particular ensures off-road parking for site operatives and a site compound, deliveries to be made to the site from the lower road and wheel washing apparatus in situ. This has been included in the list of conditions of the officer's report. It was noted on the site visit that there is a sharp bend on the access road up onto Ashes Lane. Members should note that the steep slip road that runs to the south of the site is not the only, nor indeed the main access onto Ashes Lane. The lane continues to run in a straight line to the south until it meets the lower road 240 metres further to the south, with a large area which to exit Ashes Lane opposite Paddock's Hotel. So the smaller lane with the hairpin bend is not required to be used to access the site as there is an easier and safer alternative, which is more widely used. Next slide, please. The design of this proposal mirrors that of the existing pattern of development in the area, and which can, as can be seen from the plan with the adjacent curtilage marked out in red and the site marked with a red star. It is considered that the property is of a scale and size that is in keeping with the adjacent properties and the area as a whole. The property is well designed into the landscape and provides one additional family home with an infill plot that will not have an adverse impact upon the landscape and in particular the AOMB. As can be seen from the aerial view that the proposed dwelling will be sited in excess of 25 metres from the nearest property and as it is set within a well screened site there will be no adverse impact upon the residential amenity to adjacent properties from overlooking or overshadowing. Next slide please. These photographs show the internal area of the site and the terracing of existing gardens. The photo on the left is the upper terrace looking north to south, and the photograph on the right is looking from the southwest to the northeast on the lower terrace, where the main part of the dwelling will be. The existing garage is to the right of the photograph. Next slide, please. These two photographs are taken from outside of the site looking in. The photograph on the top left is a view into the site directly from below the lower road. The existing vegetation will be remaining and additional shrubs and tree planting will be provided as part of the scheme. The photograph up to the bottom right is taken from the northwest of the site standing on Ashes Lane adjacent to the paddock fence line. As can be seen there is significant screening through existing vegetation. This will be further enhanced by the new native hedgerow to be planted along the northern boundary of the site and along the, boundary pa the paddock boundary with Ashes Lane. The existing parking area is to the right of the picture. 
To conclude, the site is within the defined settlement boundary and within the main built up area of the village. The site is within an infill plot that maintains the grain and character of the area and surrounding existing dwellings. The proposed dwelling is well designed incorporating the site levels into the design and will achieve high energy efficiency standards, along with significant additional landscaping and biodiversity gains with the associated landscaping, which will be a betterment for the area. Although it is acknowledged that the occupants would be reversing on it onto the byway, it is considered that speeds are considerably low in this location and it has been demonstrated there is sufficient visibility to ensure that there is not severe impact to any user of Ashes Lane. Overall, the proposal complies with planning policy and complies with the NDP policies, and therefore officers are recommending approval. Thank you, members and chair. Right, thank you, Mrs. Webster. Um, right, we have um, one written uh, statement uh, submission from uh, Whitchurch and Ganaru uh, PC. And I will ask Mr. Brown to actually read that to members before I invite uh, the uh, Miss Miller and, and um, Mr. Price to uh, make their submissions. Thank you. Church and Ganaroo Group Parish Council object to this planning application as we believe it breaches a number of policies in our neighbourhood development plan. Contrary to the applicant's design statement, the house is not required to meet the parish's housing needs, NDP policy WG1, as this has already been met. The minimum target for new houses in Whitchurch for the period 2000, 2011 to 2031 is 65 houses. We now have a total of 77 houses either built in the process of being built or with planning permission. We also have two new houses which have been built and for which retrospective planning permission is being sought, Old Court Bank. We do not believe that the siting, mass and design is sympathetic to the local character and that it in no way conserves or enhances the scenic beauty of the Y Valley AOMB. It thus fails to meet NDP policies WG7, WG8, WG14 and WG15. The parish, is, parish Council is concerned about the geological stability of Simmons Yacht West, given the disruption caused by recent landslides in the area. We believe that a geotechnical survey should be a condition of any development in the Simmons Yacht West settlement area. A positive geotechnical survey would be required in order for the application to meet NDP policies WG7 and WG15. We believe that contrary to the applicant's design statement, vehicular access and turning will be a major problem on Ashes Lane, BOAT WC61. Vehicles parked at the proposed dwelling will have no choice but to turn in Ashes Lane. No provision has been made for vehicle turning areas in the site plans. Any construction traffic and associated delivery vehicles would have to park in Ashes Lane, adding disruption to an already very busy byway. There will be a temptation for construction vehicles to use Pritchard's Lane, BOAT WC 72A, as a shortcut down to the B4164. This has caused enormous problems in the past, with vehicles attempting to make this turn ending up in the adjacent gardens. And that concludes, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, I now uh, I'd like to invite Miss uh, Miller to uh, speak. Uh, just remind you that you have three minutes. Uh, so in your own time, please, Miss Miller, you will need to unmute yourself. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm speaking on behalf of the residents of Dilly Dune Cottage and representing the views of Woodchester restaurant residents, the two properties opposite Wye Valley View. Firstly, we're concerned with the dangerous precedent and wide implications applications such as this present. Wye Valley View is being separated into two separate plots, one with the existing infrastructure, the other featuring greenfield land with the proposed dwelling we're discussing. Council support of this piecemeal development will set a detrimental trend in the local area, compromising the preservation of the area of outstanding natural beauty and undermining this designation. Secondly, the development fails to meet the requirements of the National Planning Policy Framework and Local Neighbourhood Development Framework. Losing greenfield land replaced by a disproportionately large development will significantly impact upon the character and natural beauty of the AOMB, not in accordance with the requirements of the MPPF, nor does it conserve or enhance the scenic beauty of the Y Valley AOMB, failing to meet NDB policies WG7, 8, 14 and 15. The planning office's recommendation to approve this application references both core strategy policy SS1 and paragraph 11 of the MPPF, 
Presumption in favour of sustainable development should be engaged if the council are unable to identify a five-year supply of deliverable housing. Following confirmation from the parish council, the housing supply needs under NDP policy WG1 for the parish have already been sufficiently met and exceeded for the period 2011 to 2031. Therefore, the recommendation to approve planning on the basis of the core strategy policy and MPPF is no longer valid. And it is neither realistic nor sustainable to expect an AOMB with limited infrastructure and a remote nature to support the wider county council's housing supply deficit. Thirdly, the most impactful to locals is the location of the site on the narrow boat known as Ashes Lane. The split section of the Y Valley View pot featuring the existing house, existing holiday let and private driveway accessing the B4164 have been sold subject to condition with the estate agents Hamilton and Stiller. Therefore, the only access to the site we can presume to the development site will be via the exceptionally narrow and largely damaged Ashes Lane. The nature of the boat represents many issues. Firstly, sheer volume of construction traffic using a single lane without any formal passing area. Number two, the damage this volume will create to an already unstable surface and cost impact for local residents. Thirdly, the blockage to the road for the unloading of materials and machinery with wider reaching implications for emergency service access. And fourthly, for the residents of Dilly Doon, whose garage is directly opposite the proposed driveway and site access, are concerned with accessibility disruption and general access to their property. In addition, and as aforementioned, we're concerned about land stability with the removal of established hedgerows, the volume of land excavation, which paired with the increased surface water runoff created by the property could have catastrophic effects, as we have seen in the local area recently. To conclude, we would like to recommend that the planning permission be refused for the site on the grounds mentioned. However, if you are considering approval, we may suggest that a construction management plan be submitted prior to a final decision being made, which outlines construction, servicing and delivery. Thank you very much for hearing my objections, committee members. OK, thank you, Ms. Miller. Uh, you did uh, exceed your three minutes slightly, but uh, I just did allow you to uh, conclude. Uh, my apologies, Chair. Thank you. OK, thank you. If you could mute yourself. Thank you. Um, Mr. Price, um, I now welcome you to uh, speak. Uh, you also have three minutes, please, in your own time. Thank you. We knew from the outset that this site required a sensitive design approach and that a standard house would not be appropriate or good enough. We undertook a detailed evaluation of the site constraints, pattern of development, local vernacular and the AOMB landscape character. This provided us with useful information to develop the design approach for the site. The result is a bespoke, high quality, sustainable family home that embraces the design expectations of adopted policy. The dwelling will continue the existing pattern of development and rhythm of the street, consistent with the NDP, adopted NDP policies. The design also works with the site levels and the plot size and dwelling to plot ratio is comparable to other properties in the area and will allow for meaningful native landscaping to assimilate the dwelling into the landscape context. We have also amended the scale and design, including a reduction in the height and size of the property to achieve the support of the planning and landscape officers, which is key given the site's location within the Y Valley AOMB. Highways have confirmed no objection to both the safety of the access and the capacity of the local highway network to accommodate the very modest increase in traffic associated with this dwelling. To clarify, highways have scrutinised the access in some detail, requested amendments, and are happy that it will function safely in terms of parking, manoeuvrability, and visibility. Access for construction traffic can be from the Lower B Road, and we're happy uh, that this can be uh, dealt with through a construction traffic management plan. The design also focuses on minimising the carbon impact of the house. The form is a simple rectangular shape, which will aid in achieving a super insulated airtight structure that minimizes heat loss. This will be complemented by low carbon heating system in the form of air source heat pump, along with solar PVs on the south roof slope and electric vehicle charging points. The glazing will be a specialist tinted, tinted glass to ensure there is no unacceptable light pollution, as well as aiding the control of internal temperatures in the summer. Water consumption will be minimised with rainwater harvesting system and surface water will be managed sustainably through soakaways. The Council Ecologist and Natural England also confirm no objection to the ecological impact of the development. With the proposed biodiversity enhancement measures such as the provision of bat and bird boxes, 
green walls, significant new hedgerow and other wildlife friendly planting, a net gain in the biodiversity value of the site will be achieved. We have worked hard to ensure there are no technical based objections from any council consultees. We are confident that this high quality, sympathetically designed and energy efficient house will make a positive contribution to the architectural diversity of the area. This being a key expectation of core strategy policy SD1 and the MPBF. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Spot on the three minutes. Well done. Um, I'd now like to request that the two virtual attendees leave the meeting. Um, I'd like to remind them that they can watch the live stream of this meeting on the Council's YouTube. And uh, thank you very much for your uh, input this morning and wish you both a, a good day. Thank you. Right, I now move to uh, the Ward Councillor. Um, Councillor Watson is the local ward member for this item. She speaks first, then has the right to uh, speak at the end of the debate, but she does not get a vote. Uh, so uh, in your own time, please, Councillor Watson. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just noted that Councillor Roan had raised his hand. Um, no. Okay. Just, um, it's, okay. It's, it's been put down now, but uh, okay. sometimes in the meeting, a member will uh, indicate that he wants to speak first. Okay. So that, that would have been the reason for that. So uh, right. please, okay. please carry on. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, um, everybody, um, you know, officers and committee members. I would firstly like to say thank you to Gemma um, for her work on this application and her presentation. But having just come out of a meeting with DEFRA and chairs of the AOMBs across England, um, I am saddened to see that there is no reference to the Y Valley AOMB management plan in the report. I would also like to say thank you to Ms. Miller, who I thought did an excellent job and um, in putting her views forward and to this parish council for their succinct representation. Before I provide members with my views on the application, I want to express my gratitude to colleagues who were able to visit the site of the proposed three bedroom dwelling with three car parking spaces on Monday. Your visit has helped to reduce my airtime. I would like you to remember, or if possible, to see the aerial view or the street view, um, which I think was slide two on Gemma's presentation. Because for, for me, um, I recognized the amount of work carried out by the applicant and the agent to reduce the size of the house and mitigate any negative impact on local biodiversity and landscape by incorporating native hedgerows and embedding green energy in its design, such as the air source, heat pump and PV panels. However, as you have heard from Ms. Miller and the Parish Council, there are grave concerns on three main issues. Number one, the carriageway. The principal access to the property is via Ashes Lane, which is a boat. As stated by the PRO, um, the Public Rights of Way officer in 4.5 of the report, a boat is where the public have a right of way for um, vehicle and other kinds of, um, kinds of traffic, but is used by the public mainly for the purposes of which footpaths and bridleways are used. That is walking, cycling or horse riding. Although a boat is man um, maintainable at public expense, the Countryside Act states that nothing in the section or in section 53 obliges a highway authority to provide or um, on a way shown on a definitive map as a byway, a metal carriageway or a carriageway by which other means provided with a surface suitable for the passage of vehicles. This is a busy boat uh, used by locals and visitors, many who walk their dogs. 
how many vehicle journeys will be necessary to move a serious amount of soil and materials on and off site, not only to prepare the site to park construction vehicles, as well as during the actual construction phase. All drivers will need to handle the tight hairpin bend in front of crossways, but also navigate the narrow um, lanes to and from the site. Having seen the damage and disruption caused to residents living on a boat where a simple two-story extension is taking place on Wyview Lane, I cringe at the thought of expected disruption caused by the preparation and building of a three-bedroom dwelling on a sloping hillside. A boat is not made to take the amount of heavy construction vehicles and with dwindling finances available for highways, I doubt it would be a priority for repair because a boat is recognized as a private road on the BPLP app. The principal access is directly opposite the garage of Dilly Doon, which I must point out actually has a current and valid application to convert the store into a holiday let. The number is 210759. As committee members saw on Monday, Ashes Lane is very narrow and there is a passing no, no passing place close to or near the site apart from the hairpin bend where four narrow lanes come together. Up to recent, the small hardcore area where the two trailers were parked on the other side of the lane opposite the entrance to the garage store has been used as a passing place. This will no longer be possible. Vehicles will need to either access their properties using Sawplitz Lane or another hair type bin or being confident reversing up or down in front of Crossways Cottage. Well, good with luck with that. In the agent's response to Highway's concerns dated 9th of September, he states, quote, it is not physically possible to create a turning space within the application site red line area. The more relevant consideration is whether the necessity for a vehicle to reverse in or out of the proposed parking will create a danger to highway or pedestrian safety. Because of the, um, the blind hairpin bend in front of crossways and the access being in front of the garage store opposite, I believe pedestrian safety is ver a very important consideration. Number two, land movement. This area, the eastern side of Simonsiat West, is prone to landslides. Many members will know about C1257, which has been closed for nearly three years, um, and it was only reopened this Easter. Please note a retaining wall at the other end of Ashes Lane towards Sawpits Lane was recently reported to BPLP because it is bulging and soon to collapse. Fingers crossed it won't take three years to rectify. The closure of C1257 together, together with the floods of February 2020 and COVID restrictions since March 2020 have been an economic disaster for local businesses, including the local inns and nearby holiday lets. This area depends on tourism and ex visitors expect to come to a place, place of peace and tranquility, not to closed roads, listening to the noise created through development or a wall of houses with limited greenery. Point three, this house is not needed. It is a large house on a small plot. The parish council has met its housing target and this one house should not be used as a bargaining chip in achieving Herefordshire's housing target. Houses can't be built in the north of the county because of phosphate issue. But the pressure to achieve housing targets should not be pushed into the lower end of the Y. Whitchurch is a super output area in an area of outstanding natural beauty. The parish needs low cost, affordable homes. Please consider the points expressed by the Parish Council and by Ms Miller. Local intelligence and the fully ratified NDP along with the AOMB um, management plan of 2020-25 provides you with the answers to what they want built in this unique landscape. 
all it requires is your discerning eye and planning knowledge on where the wetting lies. The aspirations of the applicant to build an eco-friendly three-bedroomed home with three car parking spaces or to conserve a unique landscape. I look forward to listening. Well, thank you, Councillor Watson. Um, we did uh, uh, manage to hear what you had to say throughout. You were just starting to lose frequency a little bit, but um, fortunately, uh, we didn't lose you. Um, right, we go into the uh, debate proper now. And uh, first, uh, to uh, indicate that he wishes to speak is Councillor Rome. So over to Councillor Rome, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it was Lovely going down to the um, site visit on Monday. Beautiful place. <coughs> Who wouldn't want to live there? And therein lies our problem, I think. I don't normally take an awful lot of interest in objections based upon the build time and the build inconvenience, because building is inconvenient. But here we have got a real, real issue. There are hundreds of tons of soil to come out of there. And that doesn't matter. That's down to the development. But where it, it should concern us is removal of the soil and also bringing in the building equipment. Because I've got visions of some of the trucks that um, would be used for that, up and down that byway that is open to all traffic, the boat. Now, that is going to be huge inconvenience. Build time, I don't know, six, eight months, something like that. That is immense inconvenience for anybody who lives along there. I can see nothing but delays. Whether or not we could um, bring in a, a restriction on size of vehicles, used for accessing, for taking away the soil and bringing in the equipment, bringing in the uh, the um, kit needed to build the place. I don't know. That's something that we can take advice on. But really, that, that those roads, any of those roads, are not designed to take a construction traffic of that size. Uh, secondly, uh, there's an awful lot made in the report from both aspects about, um, I think it was the engineer's report 4.4, and it was to do with um, going on and off the into the car park. Um, the 4.4 team leader engineer. It was the um, how vehicles should enter the car parking, and they should always do it in and enter in forward gear and exit in forward gear. Now I think that uh, Councillor Watson touched on that as an issue. Now could we have it confirmed that vehicles aren't going to reverse out of their car parking space? and onto the uh, byway open to all traffic. And the other thing that we must bear in mind was also touched on by Councillor Watson, that it is a boat, it is a byway open to all traffic, which means you are gonna have a lot of people on push bikes, one or two on horses maybe, but an awful lot of people on foot. So to me, the way that you go on and off the, um, the, the final user will be uh, entering and exiting their car parking space is really important because if you've got to reverse out and then you've got to reverse down that lane, I can see all sorts of this issues there. And that isn't just for the six or nine months build time. That is forever. Uh, at the moment, uh, I, I on the site on Monday, beautiful. I, I really am struggling to see it as a building plot and an, and a building plot that, that, that's got some sort of longevity about it. Nothing but inconvenience for the locals, I'm afraid. But wait to hear what others say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roan. I think there's a couple of questions there that need uh, responding to. So um, I'm going to invite uh, Mrs Webster and uh, Mark Lewis to um, actually uh, make comment with regards to access of the site. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'll, uh, I'll leave Mr. Lewis to re respond to the highway access with regard to the reversing. Um, but in regards to um, the site waste and the soil removal, um, condition five in the officers committee report um, is a site waste construction management plan, which will be required um, to demonstrate how the um, excess soil will be taken off site. Um, and in addition, we've also got a, a construction management plan for the traffic so we will be requesting that as part of the conditions um, and I believe within that management plan it will be required for smaller vehicles to be accessing the site uh, for a compound for, and site operatives to be parked within the paddock and off all the lanes and for the delivery of 
all materials to be undertaken from the lower road directly onto the site so that they don't access from Ashes Lane. Okay, I'll pass it over to Mr Lewis to answer the others. Right, thank you for that clarification, Mrs Webster. Uh, Mr Lewis, please. Mr Chairman, um, in terms of the access onto the uh, public right of way, um, we did give that quite a bit of thought during the application process, and we've looked at it in context of the speed that people will approach the access, which will be relatively low, and the reversing off the driveway isn't uncommon in low speed environments. We do allow it across the county where speeds are low, and we went to quite a bit of effort with the applicant to make sure that intervisibility between users of the prow and vehicles coming off the driveway is maintained um, to ensure that, that that safety that Councillor Rome was concerned about would be maintained for the future. Um, in terms of reversing down the lane, they won't need to do that. They'll just reverse off the driveway as if it was any driveway in the estate in the direction of which they want to travel when they come off. Um, does that answer your question, Councillor Rome? Uh, Councillor Rohn, like yeah, to... yes, it does. Uh, could I, and, and that's fine. Thank you very much for that. If it's acceptable, then it's acceptable. Um, can, can I go back to condition number five, though? If um, if it's down to the developer, um, the applicant, to decide how they're going to remove the waste from the site, um, we're going to be granting permission today. Now, if those conditions aren't met or aren't acceptable. It, it, I'm sure there's a the mechanics for sorting that out, but could we not actually condition that you smaller vehicles are on there? I realise that number uh, condition number five suggests that they've got to come up with a um, 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 uh, some sort of plan. But if they don't think that if the applicant doesn't think that's feasible, doesn't think that's economically viable, or it takes too long, whichever cost in, involvement, uh, and they can just say no, we can't do that. They've still got consent to go ahead and build it. Could we not? Uh, Put it as a condition that smaller vehicles have got to be used. I'm just thinking of the, the something to uh, not appease the red locals, but to make living with the uh, situation a little bit easier. You know, filling up a, a 22 ton truck with soil is going to take however long. Filling up one that takes six tons take an awful lot less, and so you're going to have the ability of moving them along a, a little bit quicker. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm here to be advised rather than to uh, dictate. Okay. Thank you. Uh... Thank you, Councillor Rohn. I think they're uh, valid questions. I don't know whether uh, Mrs. Webster wants to respond. Oh, I see uh, Mr. Withers has got his hand up, so I'll, I'll go to Mr. Withers first. Thank you. Sorry, Chairman, I was struggling to find the virtual hand function, so re resorted to the old way of doing it. But um, I just wanted to come back on the point that Councillor Rome was making about conditioning the actual size or, or weight um, of um, construction traffic. Um, it's it's clear from um, guidance and, and 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 legislation in case law that the, that the planning authority. Uh, can't impose um, restrictions on uh, vehicles um, using the, you know, the public highway. If, if there are weight restrictions in place, clearly that that is the, the the way in which that is regulated. The only control that we would have, which is a less, uh, I think, a less direct level of control than Councillor Rohn has 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 referred to, would be through the management plan, whereby the applicant through discharging the condition would commit to his contractors his or her contractors um you know limiting their activities to vehicles of a certain size that would be obviously part of a further assessment prior to commencement of any development on the site i i hasten to add and would obviously have the input from from mark and his team on on, on the um the suitability of that commitment Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Withers. Um, did you want to add anything, Mrs. Webster, or are you? No. Um, okay, fine. I think that uh, has answered your question, Councillor Rohn. Uh, so I move on to Councillor Johnson, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Um, it was the most interesting visit on uh, Monday. And uh, from that, I can see exactly why, I believe I can see why, the officers feel it um, inclined to recommend approval. If you look at what is proposed to be built, 
I, I would agree entirely with the officer's assessment. However, when you look at the site within which it is to be built and um, all the matters that are surrounding and affecting that, <clears throat> I'm afraid I come to a different view. I support all the points made by Councillor Owen. In addition, I would just add two other points. The choice of road by which contractors reach the site to me is immaterial. They've got to finish up at the site in order to do whatever job they are contracted to do. And with that will come all of the disturbance to which Councillor Rohn has already referred. The additional point that worries me is that given <clears throat> the history of unstable land in this particular site, and then considering the sheer amount of soil which would have to be removed in order to facilitate the building, I believe we have to consider what effect is that likely to have on the general stability of Ash Lane. If you remove all that land from below the level of the road, that land at the moment forms part of the buttress which supports that road. If you move it away, it seems to me all you've done is increase the liability of further damage to Ash Road itself. I find it difficult to support this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor uh, Johnson. Councillor Bowen, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think a lot of the points have been made already. And obviously, considering the instabil potential instability of this particular area, a geotechnical survey of the highest quality is an absolute essential. Uh, but I do think also the access is a big problem. You can't control necessarily which way people go or what size of vehicles they use. Uh, I've done quite a lot of construction works in my own time as a builder of riding arenas, and you get your four wheelers, which are very neat and take perhaps 10 tons. You get your big six or eight wheelers, a very different proposition indeed. Um, and uh, however good the management plan, it's probably still a highly difficult plan to comply with. And it, our enforcement team is notoriously poor at actually bringing people into line, I'm afraid to say. Sorry about that. And we should also respect the parish council's views. Parish councils all too often feel demeaned and ignored by planning committees and by the planners themselves, which is, I think, very unfortunate. They live there. They know the place. They know the problems. And quite honestly, we should listen to them very carefully, I think. And as has been mentioned, they've more than done their bit for making sure they've exceeded their housing allocation. And it is such a very special area. And I wasn't there yesterday. I do apologize for that. This is I have to attend to. Uh, I do know the area a bit, and I've been round about there quite frequently. And it, it is a wonderful part of the world. But let's make sure it stays a wonderful part of the world and not a disaster area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Um, Councillor Milne, followed by Councillor Milmore. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I, <clears throat> I share uh, Councillor Watson's disappointment at the lack of reference to the Y value Valley AONB management plan, which after all is, 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 is 2021 to 2026. So it's quite a newly adopted uh, uh, document in its current form and has very useful chapters on planning and design. I, um, I, do, I direct members' attentions to page 88, where on at, at uh, paragraph 9.1.6, it says quite clear that development in the AONB should be a benchmark of excellence. And it goes on to talk about uh, to define that, uh, that in terms of green infrastructure and design uh, requiring uh, developments to uh, acquire um, biodiversity and uh, in enhancement and in, ter in terms of design uh, references the uh, guidelines uh, for landscape and visual impact assessments uh, under um, paragraph 917 and how uh, the these are best used to uh, ensure that um, uh, new, new development uh, does not uh, cumulatively um, adversely impact uh, 
on the qualities of the AONB are, are, are that erode the, the landscape and features of, of, of AONBs, particularly obviously the, the Y Valley AONB. And uh, I, I, I would also m mention our, uh, the, the National uh, Design Guide, which came out in, in January, uh, expects us to um, ensure that uh, we do well design places that contribute to local distinctiveness. And then obviously in an Airbnb, we have particular commitments to that. It um, is a disappointment, therefore, to, to see, and I, I'm sorry that there hasn't been um, very much discussion of this so far, uh, that we were faced with an application with um, really quite a poor quality and, and a, a suburban uh, design mantra about it. The fenestration, for example, to me, looks utterly artless and clunky with um, ill-proportioned and eccentrically uh, subdivided fenestration that does, does not um, uh, reflect that, that local distinctiveness that we would expect to see anywhere, let alone at an AONB. That's all I have to say for the moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor, Mil Councillor Milmore, followed by Councillor Selden. Thank you, Chair. I'm sorry I was unable to be at the site meeting on Monday. Um, I had other things I had to deal with. Um, I think one, my first question may have been answered already, and that was, um, it was, uh, I, I, I don't think um, the inconvenience of um, uh, site construction vehicles is a material reason to refuse an application. So I think that may have been answered, but um, uh, so I, I think that's irrelevant, um, any inconvenience or noise caused by um, vehicles during a construction. Um, the other one was, uh, I can't quite remember, is this um, planning application within the um, neighbourhood development plan settlement boundary? Uh, so if you could just answer that one for me. Um, at the moment, I'm sh I'm, I don't feel I'm qualified as some of the other councillors because I wasn't there on Monday, but I'm struggling to find a material reason to refuse this application. But could you just uh, reiterate whether it's inside this settlement boundary? Right. Can I uh, ask Mrs Webster to uh, respond? Yes, certainly. Um, yes, it is within the settlement boundary. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the other question was with regards to... Um, uh, noise, contamination, etc., uh, from building works. Is, is that a material fact? Uh, so Mr. Withers, perhaps you'd like to uh, respond to that one. Thank you. Yes, just to um, correct Councillor Millmore slightly. Um, yeah, it, it is a material consideration. The, the, the impact of construction traffic, both on on the, the the road network and potentially in relation to the living conditions of um, existing residents um, in the locality, is is a material planning consideration. The the view that uh, we would normally take as as planners advising you is that 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 is a a fleeting um, you know temporary impact that is part and parcel of of pretty much any development project and, and therefore conditions in relation to the time when construction is taken or the time when deliveries are made or how those deliveries are made is the means by which we would mitigate that impact but it, it's not quite correct to say that it's irrelevant it, 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 it's just a, a matter that we would almost certainly in 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 most cases that I'm I'm experienced with would would be able to condition uh, and control and mitigate appropriately. Thank you for clearing that for me. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Withers. Uh, we move uh, to Councillor Selden, followed by uh, Councillor Fagan and then James. Thank you. I believe Councillor Fagan was before me, but with no. that permission, I'll continue. No, uh, you, you were first, actually. All right, okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, four points, really. The first question to the officers around the area of outstanding natural beauty and, and that management plan. How much weight can we give that plan when making a decision? Right, who wants to respond to that? Councillor, uh, sorry, Mr. Withers. Um, the, the rather vague uh, response to that is you're entitled as, a, as, a, as an individual to give, give that document as much or as little weight as you 
you wish. Um, my my view on it is that um, it's regrettable that it wasn't referenced um, in in the report. I, I accept that, and that's a point that was been uh, made by by a couple of of um, councillors during the debate. Um, but but ultimately, it's not part of the development plan. Uh, it, it's uh, a material consideration that sits alongside uh, the the core strategy and, and the neighbourhood development plan in this case. Um, my, my view is that it doesn't, um, you know, the, the lack of a reference to it, I don't think undermines the uh, officer's report or the recommendation. And, you know, I would reference there the, the, the specialist input that we've had from our senior landscape officer on, on the matter, who, who's obviously considered uh, the landscape impacts uh, subjectively, I accept. So uh, obviously you as councillors are entitled to form your own views on that, having visited the site and, and, and understood the issues. But um, it is a material consideration to which you can give as much or as little weight as you wish. It does not have the same level of weight as the core strategy or the neighbourhood development plan in this case. Oh, right. Thank you, Mr. Withers. Um, uh, most um slightly helpful i'd like to say on that one um the second point is the um the construction management plan um i think i mentioned this on the site visit yesterday but um the the enforceability of such a construction management plan concerns me somewhat looking at having having visited the site and seen the um the the, uh, the width of the lanes and the um certainly the hairpin bend, uh, uh, having walked down the boat to see those. Um, is there, um, can we, can we question again, can, can we enforce the construction management plan and, and how do we do that question? Right, I'll go back to Mr. Withers on that one again. Um, oh, I'm being a nuisance, Mr. Chairman. No, not, not at all. Um, but I think the um, applicant did uh, sort of, mentioned that uh, the lower road was going to be used for uh, construction purposes, but uh, uh, Mr. Withers, please. The, the simple answer um, to Councillor Selden's question is yes. Um, clearly the level of commitment that we would require from the applicant through the discharge of that condition would be quite significant in the context of this site. But once we have established and agreed those commitments, then yes, you know, obviously, within the resources that the council has at its disposal, we can enforce the terms of that management plan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Withers. And um, with your permission, Chairman, um, last point for, for clarification, please. The, the stability of the substructure, how much weight do we give that in determining this planning application? Shall, shall I come back on that point? Yes, yes, if you, if you, yes, if you would, please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, again, the you know stability, the condition of ground of the ground uh, is a material planning consideration. Um, you can you can afford it weight. Um, my view is that um, you know in, in in the majority of cases there are other regulatory um, provisions that would control the uh, responsibilities of the developer through the building control regime, for example. Um, one suggestion that, that I might put um, while I have the floor is that um, if, if the, the councillors are, are or the committee is sufficiently concerned in, in that regard, then it's not beyond the realms of possibility to impose a pre-commencement condition requiring further uh, investigation of the uh, stability of the land and the construction techniques um, required to um, uh, you know, secure safe development could, could be imposed, but I would stress traditionally that's outside the scope of planning control and is left for um, uh, the building regulations regime. Thank you. Gemma's got her hand up, Joe. Uh, I, I, I just noticed that, uh, Miss, Mrs. Webster. Okay. Uh, just, just to add on to uh, what Mr. Withers just said, there is um, if you have a look at the cross-sectional plan, um, there's actually very little earth moving and they're trying to utilise the terrace gardens as they are. Um, so it reduces the amount of soil removal from sites that will be required. So I hope that might just alleviate some concerns there with the amount of soil that might be coming off there. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, if, I, if I may, uh, just 
that has um, answered a lot of the doubts I would have had about um, granting this application. I mean, where I'm struggling, Chair, is to find reasons to refuse it. And it seems to me that our officers have done a very, very good job in covering off most of the issues that we've um, come up with. The highways officer is, is content that, that, it, that this, this is achievable. Um, Mrs. Webster is content that the, the planning issues, though I would like to see um, a condition in there that says that a full substructure survey should be undertaken before any commencement of, um, of uh, construction work. And, um, in, and, I, and I struggling again with, with the, the um, situation within the ANOB and that weight that we give to the, um, the policy that's just been, or the document that's just been published. So in a way, I am struggling that much that I'm going to stick my neck out, as I do occasionally in this committee, and, and propose that we accept Mrs. Webster's recommendation with that additional condition about the geological survey. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Councillor Selden. Do we have a seconder for that uh, proposal, please? Councillor Johnson, is, is that a second? Yes, it is. So Councillor Johnson has uh, seconded that proposal for uh, acceptance of this application. Uh, I move on then to uh, Councillor Fagan, followed by Councillor James, followed by Councillor Polly Andrews. Um, Fagan, please. Yeah, thanks, Chen. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to make the, the site visit. I was working, but I was uh, going to say, I mean, it, it does concern me, the lack of reference to the AONB uh, plan. And, and I, um, I was actually going to uh, suggest that we uh, defer the application for a substructure survey uh, or a, a geological survey of some sort because uh, given the experiences in the area um, it, it seems um, that that would be sort of an advisable it would be advisable to have a document like that but obviously um, that uh, Councillor Selden's already put forward a motion so um, I'll just keep quiet for the moment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fagan. Councillor James, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I mean, too long as said, Councillor Seldon has said, but I, I, I feel I've yet to hear any, any sound planning reason to refuse this. I mean, you know, we we heard about the soil, but from the plans I looked at and the, and what the case officer has said, you know, we're not talking about that much vast uh, amount of amount of soil to be moved. Um, and I, I just, you know, Council Mill mentioned all the, uh, the, the, the quality of the design. Well, it, you know, I've seen far, far, far worse than, than, than this particular uh, um, plan or proposal. And, you know, we can't refuse it on that. You know, we are a planning committee, not a, a design committee. And I sometimes think that we've gone down that road of dis deciding we're the designers, not the, not the planning committee. Um, so whilst I understand, you know, the, the objections, etc., there are no sound grounds for refusal that would hold up on appeal. I, I think you know it would be a, a, a foregone conclusion that the, the what the inspector would say on appeal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor James. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, you you've taken your hand down. Did you uh, not wish to speak? My query has been answered, Chairman. Okay, fine. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do think, though, uh, we have to always remember that we are aiming for the highest quality and standards of design. It's something that's in our core strategy and we forget it at our and the county's peril, I do believe. So I agree with Councillor Milne, we should be looking for the ultimately best and most appropriate and sensible designs we possibly can. And you must consider whether this is good enough or not. Many would say it is not. Thank you. Ch chairman, Chairman, 
I, yes. I have to say, it's a matter, it's a subjective matter. Um, you know, some people would consider that Councillor Boehm is a very handsome and good-looking man. Others would have a... Not, not many, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, I think we, uh, we we won't go down that route. Uh, Councillor Millmore, please. Yes, I, I've, got, I've got to uh, support Councillor James. We cannot um, make decisions on subjective grounds, and, and we are a planning committee and we are not a design committee. Um, so I think it would be ridiculous if we were constantly making um, decisions on subjective grounds or because we didn't like the design of this or the design of that. Um, so I, I think what Councillor Selden, Councillor James said, I utterly agree with. Okay, thank you uh, for that clarification, Mr. Uh, Councillor Millmore. Um, I've got no further hands uh, showing. Um, so we have a proposal on the um, uh, that's been tabled to uh, support this application and also seconded. Um, Can I just make one first comment, Chair, if I may, as, as proposer? Um, Go on. It's a great shame that the lines of accountability towards the AONB documents are not clearer. And, and what Mr. Withers says that it's really up to us how much weight we give it is absolutely no help whatsoever, because then that also means that any building in uh, planning inspector also can give any weight whatsoever he thinks whatsoever depending on which side of the bed he's got out that day so i think the, um, there's there's an issue here going forward with the core strategy review that the status of the anob um, documents need to be put in a more clear place thank you chairman okay, okay thank you for uh, that comment We've got no further speakers uh, before I invite the uh, ward councillor to uh, sum up. Um, I'd like to go to uh, Mr. Withers, please. Any comments? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think um, I'm satisfied that um, I needn't uh, take too much of uh, of the committee's time. I, I, I believe the you know the the, the, the relevant considerations uh, that that. Uh, uh, concern this application have all been thoroughly aired. Um, I would um, probably just like to stress that at a high level, um, although it doesn't appear to be um, particularly on, on, on the committee members um, list of concerns, the, the, the fact that um, the parish has, has exceeded its um, indicative housing target shouldn't be um, a factor that um, leads you to object to the principle of development. Um, what's important is, you know, what harm, what environmental harm, what's, you know, what, what other harm or impacts are, 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 are associated with the development, not, not, not at its heart is, is a consideration that, the, that, that, that Whitchurch and Ganaru have done pretty well on their, their housing delivery. Um, aside from that, I think the, the councillors have, have very clearly um, expressed views one side and, uh, of the fence and the other in relation to the uh, AOMB impacts uh, and uh, have clearly understood and I think had some very clear advice on the um, highway safety and uh, road network capacity issue. So I'm content to, um, to, to sit back now and, and allow uh, uh, Councillor Watson to sum up and, and, and for you to organise the, the vote. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, Mr. Withers. Uh, over to Councillor Watson, please. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, before I go on, I just want you to remember what Ms. Miller said. The access onto the B4164 will not be available because the property is, sub is sold subject to contract. So the Y Valley view is up for sale and is subject to contract. So therefore the principal access to do all the construction work is from the boat on Ashes Lane. Number one, um, I hear, and I'm really grateful for your debate, and I can understand, you know, um, like uh, Councillor Momo has said, is that the, the site visit really gives you a good perspective of the issues. For me, the reason why I'm really disappointed that the, the Y Valley AOMB management plan wasn't um, uh, noted because 
my reason to ask that either uh, you defer um, or refuse this application would be basically the negative impact on the Y Gorge's distinctive landscape and therefore comes under uh, the core strategy policies LD1 and Tourism E4. At present, the site provides a unique and special terrace green landscape enveloped by hedgerows and grazed by sheep. This development does not conserve or enhance the scenic beauty of the eastern face of Simmons Jet West in the Y Valley A O M B. It does not prote protect the area's character as outlined in the Y Valley A O M B Management Plan, Land Management Zone 09, which is small clusters of historic squatter settlements on valley sides, surrounded by intricate patterns of small fields, dry stone walls, narrow, narrow lanes, and small deciduous woodlands. Under VWL3, the development does not enhance or conserve special quality number 11, that is the picturesque, extensive and dramatic views. Inappropriate land management may degrade or destroy the landscape viewed from the viewpoint, including cumulative impact of a large single structures or small developments. Nor does the development enhance or conserve the special quality number 12, the overall sense of tranquility, sense of remoteness and naturalness or wildness of the area. Changes in land management, including new development intensification of road traffic with additional car use requires additional highway infrastructure. And there is a destruction of habitat or disruption to the integrity of the wide ecological network. Within the Y Valley AOMB management plan, WVS4 states that the highest priority should be given to addressing issues in the Simmons Yet and Tintin areas. This is a priority area for the AOMB management plan. Please take note. This is why I am upset that the Y Valley AOMB management plan hasn't, has not been um, referenced in this by the case officer. I, I, I just think that it's, it is really disappointing. If the committee is mindful to approve this application, is it possible to ask that the committee defer this application to see site of the A or B management plan, but also to read and, con um, and consider the construction management plan, knowing that the B4164 access will not be available. It might not be available unless the new owners of the property of Y Valley View will actually allow the construction vehicles to use their new their driveway. So is it possible for you to see site as well as me and members of the public to actually see the construction management plan in advance to see what measures are in place to mitigate any disruptions to the residents and emergency services and ensure that there is no damage to the boat. And also just to pick up on um, uh, Councillor Seldon's is that I would like to see a substructure survey, um, you know, done in advance, a geotechnical survey to be carried out to assure not only uh, the residents, but also Heritage Council's infrastructure department that the house will not move or cause a, an additional landslide down, downhill, because it's, it is, land movement is a key issue and the retaining wall that happened on C1257 had a significant impact on this community for three years. So I am grateful for your debates. I'm glad that the key issues were raised. I'm grateful to Councillor Milne for his um, perspective on the design of the house. For many residents, it's not a fill-in, it's a shoe-in and um, yeah. I, I, and I leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Um, right, we um, we have in front of us um, a proposal 
by uh, Councillor Selden, seconded by Councillor Johnson uh, for approval of this application, subject to an additional condition um, uh, that uh, a pre-commencement uh, geotech survey should be conducted. Um, can I just have clarification that there weren't any other uh, pre-commencement uh, or conditions uh, cited? Uh, Councillor Bowen, you've got your hand up. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I just uh, think we ought to take notice of Councillor Watson's uh, impassioned plea for taking notice of the AONB plan. Uh, can we can we include that somewhere? I think it's very important. Right, thank but you. I uh, want to prove this. Uh, thank you for that interjection. Um, Councillor Selden, uh, as the proposer, um, is that something that you wish to consider? Please, as an additional I, chair, I'm not sure how we can incorporate a an additional condition that allows the AANOB plan to be incorporated within the decision notice. And I look to uh, Mrs. Evans um, to, for that guidance on that. Yes, I would like to see that, but I, as, as Mr. Withers said during my initial questioning, uh, that plan has limited well i was after a word like limited um weight within our decision making process so i, I look, look to mr Ev mrs evans for uh, so, some guidance on that hey thank you uh, councillor selden mrs evans thank you chair thank you councillor selden um I mean, mr weathers has already addressed how much weights can be attributed to the aonb management plan uh, at the end of the day we have a motion on the table it's been proposed it's been seconded that is what we have at this point in time there is we're not we don't have the ability to condition that you've got to look at the aonb management plan before commencement because that's something that you would have to take into account in making the decision to grant permission in the first place it can't come afterwards if you are minded that you want to obviously defer the application then obviously we have a motion on the table that either gets taken off the table or you vote on that one if the motion is lost then the deferral can then come put for, come forward as a second motion to be seconded i hope that clarifies the position chair it certainly does thank you uh, so uh, uh, i presume councillor selden um, and um uh, Councillor uh, Johnson, are uh, happy for the uh, the vote to take place, or um, uh, have you any other concerns? No, Joe, I, I'm happy the vote takes place, and sh should the, uh, the motion fall, then we'll consider the issue of uh, a deferral. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, I will allow Councillor Fagan to come in, but the the debate has been concluded. Um, we are supposed to be going to the vote now, but uh, if you briefly make a point, please. Well, thank you, Chair. It's, it's just looking at the core strategy and the, the section on AOMBs. It does say the emerging core strategy must ensure consistency of approach to development within both areas, AOMBs, through its planning policies, joint working via the AONB partnerships and implementation of the AONB management plans. So I, I'm struggling a bit with that because it, it, it's there in our core strategy that uh, the consideration needs to be taken. Okay, thank you. Councillor Johnson. You need to unmute. Thank you. I got it, thank you, Chairman. Uh, no, in view of the comments that have been made over the, the last few minutes, I'm going to uh, withdraw my seconding uh, of this uh, motion. The, uh, there are a number of things here that concern me not least of which is reference to the AONB <clears throat> as voiced by um, uh, other members. Um, there are the other thing that's disturbed me here, it was raised by comments from uh, Catherine James. I understand what he was saying and agree with what he was saying. However, we are asked to make judgments um, about things. So on the AONB, one of the considerations is, does it enhance or improve? Now, you can't make that consideration without taking into account design. Um, and I feel quite uncomfortable about the whole of this decision, and I withdraw my seconding of this motion. 
Thank you for that, Councillor Johnson. So um, we still have a proposed uh, Councillor Selden, please. Do you want? I, I, as I, 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 that being the case, then, Chairman, I withdraw that proposal and would therefore propose a deferral. I would second that. The ANB can be take the ANB uh, plan can be taken into consideration. Okay, uh, thank yes. you. So we uh, we have a proposal uh, by uh, Councillor Selden, and I've heard Councillor Bowen second that proposal. Thank you. Um, so. Um, Jack, Jack, can we just seek clarification exactly what it is that the committee would like the officers to provide in this period of deferral before it then comes back, please? Right. Who wants to answer that one? Um, if I may, Chairman, I think well, what, what the committee would like to see is the cross-referencing with the plan that um, Councillor Watson has um, quite eloquently expressed needs to be cross-referenced along with the impacts that that gives with the, um, the, the plan that's been put forward with us. Uh, I, I can't see there's any other, unless members would see another reason for, for deferral on, on those grounds, but I think the, the lack of mention of the plan from the, I can't remember exactly what the document's called and I'm sure Councillor Watson will correct me, but um, the lack of reference to that would seem to be a bit of a, a hole within the report itself. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go back into uh, further debate on this. We've got a, a motion tabled for deferral um, and um, a seconder as well. So I'm, I'm inclined to go straight to the, deba uh, the, uh, the vote on this. Unless I, um, Chair, I'm sorry to ask. I mean, we're, we're talking about cross reference of a plan with the impact that gives with the plan to be put forward. Please, can we have clarification of exactly what it is that we are asking for? What I, I, I'm very, very unclear, and I'm sure the officers are as well, exactly what we are, are being asked to provide. So, if Councillor Watson does have that information, can she just please say now and then suggest moving to the vote? Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. So, Councillor Watson, please. Yeah, thank you. What I would like is that there is no mention of the Y Valley AUMB um, management plan within the case officer's report. And as in the Y Valley AUMB management plan, WVS4 states that the highest priority should be given to addressing issues in the Simmons Yat area. And therefore, how does this development link um, and enhance or conserve the land management zone 09 Y Gorge under WVL3 around um, the special quality number 11 and special quality number 12, which is around the tranquility and sense of remoteness. I think that the design of the house could also be looked at using the um, using those same um, principles. So it's the, the deferral is to bring in and cross-reference because for me, on this application, ensuring the Y Gorge's distinctive landscape is crucial. My other two conditions was about seeing site of the construction management plan and also the um, substructure survey. Okay, thank you. Um... Okay, so Chair, what, I'm, I, I was, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, uh, obviously <coughs> referencing the Y Valley Management AONB plan, I'm sure that that can be addressed by officers, um, and I'm sure Mr Withers will be able to actually confirm about the point of uh, asking for a substructure survey information to be provided prior to for consideration. I, I, I am that doesn't fall within the confines of what is actually required and also the construction management plan either, but I'm sure Mr. Withers can address that one for us. Okay, thank you. Mr. Withers, you're muted. We 
we still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Good. Um, so I need to, um, um, might be my naivety about the, um, uh, the, the, the motion that Councillor Selden has put, but um, as I understood his initial um, uh, deferral, uh, I think in simple terms uh, that the lack of reference to the Y Valley uh, AOMB management plan uh, is something that we need to uh, address in a an updated report. And, and Councillor Watson has made it um, I think quite clear in the notes that I've made what, what uh, specific elements of that um, that document we need to cover and my my view on that would be that we would um, review our position and uh, seek further advice landscape advice from our senior landscape officer with those points in mind um, uh, councillor watson referred to other concern matters of concern um, i don't believe that councillor selden had, had referenced those i mean we were about to vote on a condition requiring a geotechnical um, survey to be submitted prior to commencement. That to me is a perfectly acceptable, reasonable and appropriately um, uh, framed condition. I don't believe it's something that we would require before we could make a determination. That's my personal and professional opinion. But dealing with the interpretation of the Y Valley, y Valley Management Plan is something that we can you know, revisit and come back to you with. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, Mrs Evans, are you content with that? Yeah, that's fine. As I say, just one clarification from Mr Withers about uh, that would be my concern, asking for a, a large geotechnical survey to be done prior to um, a, a, any consideration of grant of permission would, would be considered unreasonable. Thank you. Okay, fine. Um, I will allow Councillor Watson one more uh, opportunity to come in, but uh, I will then go to the vote. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I really do appreciate it. I'm just wondering, because the AOMB office um, is not a statutory consultee, will they be um, a consultee uh, with officers? It's a, a question for Mr Withers. Thank you. Mr Withers, yeah. Mm. No. Sorry, we can't hear you, Mr. Withers. Sorry, can you hear me now? Apologies. We can't. We can't. Um, that they are not a statutory consultee. We do have uh, an ongoing uh, arrangement in terms of providing them with access to applications and where they feel uh, it necessary, they do they they do comment so that they they pick these applications up um, where they feel it is necessary or appropriate for them to comment. So I don't propose that we should change our normal working practices and engage with them at this late stage. I, I think we can deal with that internally. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Mr. Withers. Right, we have tabled uh, a motion for deferral of this application uh, subject to um, uh, an amended officer report uh, to um, include the um, AOMB management plan. Um, can um, Democratic Services please um, verify with me uh, the voting number? Uh, I should ask members, uh, you, you've all been present for the debate. Is there anybody that uh, needs to advise me that uh, they're not in a position to vote? I see no hands. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jen, if you could just confirm the voting number and launch the vote, please. Yes, Chair, the voting number is 15 and the poll is on your screen now. Right, so this is uh, Land at Y Valley View, Sim and Chat, um, recommendation for deferral of this application. So you are voting for deferral, against or abstain. Um, so um, if you uh, please vote now, press, press the blue submit button. Chair, all votes are in. 13, 4, 2 against. Okay, so that motion is carried, so that application is deferred. Uh, that concludes the uh, business of the meeting uh, today. The uh, date of the next meeting is Wednesday 19th of May, which may be a, a physical meeting rather than a virtual one, uh, depending on the rules at, at the time. Uh, so... Um, 
uh, we look forward to uh, learning uh, fate on that one. But finally, before I close the meeting, uh, could I have confirmation that the live stream is uh, stopped?